Silk Sonic is a huge homage to the music of the 60s and 70s. Here's how you can achieve that classic drum sound. Art of Drumming is not just a YouTube channel, but also a free platform where you can find numerous drum-related courses filmed by major international artists. Head on over and join our growing community. Silk Sonic is comprised of the two American musicians Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. While they share the vocal part, Anderson Pack is also the drummer for the band. He's well known for playing drums and singing or rapping along in his solo project as well. Even though Silk Sonic started as a little joke between the two musicians during Bruno Mars's tour in 2017, where Anderson Pack was the opening act, they went back to the studio four years later and recorded the debut album of Silk Sonic in 2021. The project is not about creating a completely new sound, but more about paying tribute to the classic soul sound of the 1960s and 70s. Mixed with some disco, rap and R&B influences, the sound of Silk Sonic can be described as a revival of the iconic 60s and 70s with a nice modern touch. However, the clarity and production quality of their music is outstanding and up to today's standards, so you can tell right away it's not an original old record, but a brand new modern album with a retro vibe. Let's listen to their first and by now most successful single, Leave the Door Open. The vibe of this tune just has to make you move and the sound here reminds a lot of the classic R&B sound from back in the day. If you look at the music video, you can clearly spot Anderson Pack playing an old Ludwig kit and since he is also endorsed by Ludwig, that might also be what he used in the studio. We not only looked at the videos but also at what they used live on stage. Since Eric Hernandez, Bruno Mars's brother and also drummer for his band, plays throughout most of the Silk Sonic shows, we also noticed his setup and got some inspiration from that as well. Now for the recreation we had to bring in some old gear and got our hands on a 70s Ludwig kit as well. The rounded bearing edges of the kit, the three ply shells with reinforcement rings and the internal muffling system make this kit perfect for a sound like this. Paired with a mid 60s Acrolyte, the drums are exactly what the original R&B artists used back in the 70s and therefore there could not be any better equipment to make a video like this one. Now let's start with the bass drum. We decided to go with single ply coated Remo ambassador heads on both sides. When you check out the live kits of Anderson Pack and Eric Hernandez, you'll notice some pretty obvious similarities. The first is a huge porthole in the center of the rezzo head of the bass drum that enables the air to exit the drum shell and shortens the sound. Another thing we brought in from their setups are the felt strips we installed under both drum heads. That classic muffling option is perfect for a sound like this one. Here's the tuning of both heads. With some muffling inside the kick drum and a felt beater for the right attack, the kick drum is ready for some mics. For the attack, a dynamic Sennheiser MD441 inside the kick works great and a large diaphragm MC740 in front of the kick drum adds the low end we need. Listen to that kick drum sound. The Acrolyte snare is one of the most recorded snares ever. The aluminum drum has been a studio standard since the 60s and this exact 14 x 5 snare was also built in this exact decade. The drum head here is also a Remo ambassador and the tuning is in a medium high range. Pascal played around with a few different muffling options and the mini muff once again worked best. Eric Hernandez however uses a wallet for muffling live and that classic trick gets you in a similar spot. With an SM57 as a snare mic, this is our Silk Sonic snare sound.
the 12 and 16 inch toms also got some Remo ambassador heads. The single ply construction enables the drum to produce the whole frequency spectrum and especially for a low tuning, thin drum heads just give you a wider tuning range than thicker ones. There's also no hard hitting involved in this music, so the durability of single ply heads is totally fine here. After tuning the drums to the range of the original, Pascal added some muffling. For the rack tom he used the internal dampening system and for the floor tom he brought in two mini muffs. To capture the toms, two old Sennheiser MD421s are the obvious choice. Those dynamic mics like the SM57 on the snare and the MD441 inside the kick drum have been around for decades and are studio standards that you can use in all sorts of scenarios. Here's our tom sound. Since we're concentrating on the look of Anderson Pack's kit in the music video, we also wanted to stick with only two cymbals, a hi-hat and a crash ride. Our choices are 14-inch K-Custom special dry hats for an articulate but pretty dry hi-hat sound and a 19-inch carapy that works great both as a crash and a ride. We placed a large diaphragm condenser MC740 as a mono overhead mic right above the center of the kit and to add some dirt to the sound, and glue the close mics together, another classic dynamic mic, the Biodynamic M88, is placed as a worst mic above the kick drum, with a microphone capsule being at an equal distance from the center of the snare and the beater of the kick drum. If you're interested in the audio mixing process of our Silk Sonic drum sound and want to take a look at the rough audio tracks, make sure to head over to artofdrumming.com and watch our Mixing Iconic Drum Sounds course, where Pascal takes you through his individual mixing process of our Recreating Iconic Drum Sounds videos. Now it's time to enjoy some drumming, so here's Pascal's take on Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic. I'm sipping wine sip, sip. in a row. I look too good, look too good to be alone. My house, house clean, my pool warm, pool warm. just shake smooth like a newborn. We should be dancing, romancing in the key swing and the west. The sound of Silk Sonic's debut album, An Evening with Silk Sonic, really takes you straight back to the early days of R&B music. Even though this homage uses a lot of the sound aesthetics that were already there, the mix of retro and modern elements makes their music stand out today and a lot of fun to listen and play to. How did you like our version of this old school drum sound? And do you like using similar sound colors yourself? Let us know in the comments and don't stop hitting us with your suggestions for upcoming videos. We're seeing all of them and taking each one on our growing list of amazing drum sounds to cover in the future.